Well, fuck. Walking Against the Rain was written and directed by Scott Leas. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. He's done some shorts. Check out his IMDb page for the full listing of his work. And this stars Sophia Alani and Reese Douglas as Blair and Tommy. Two strangers that happen to meet over walkie-talkie in a post-apocalyptic world, and they want to find a way to meet up and possibly pair up and survive this crazy post-apocalyptic wasteland where, well, there's really nobody else around. There's not even anyone around, such as Tiffany once said, because I think we're alone now, and the beating of our hearts is the only sound okay. In all seriousness, there are... A few other people around, such as weird cultists and some creatures, but mainly they're just alone and talking via walkie-talkie and talking about their life experiences and what life was like before this crazy event occurred. We don't actually know what occurs in this. That's just a little bit of a spoiler right there. The bottom line is the world be fucked. It's somewhere in the UK also, based on the accents and the locations. And from there, Sophia Alani and Reese Douglas. Uh, take their respective journeys. <laughs> Blair seems very tough and you know, you know, hardened, and Tommy is a bit not weakling, not meek, but just you know, he he's been scarred by a few things going on. So from there, that's what we have. They communicate via walkie-talkie, run into a few things, and it's an indie horror offering that I will say I went into with really no expectations. Not that I thought it was going to be bad, but I read the description. I'm like, sure, why the hell not? Description sounds cool. It's for a few bucks on Amazon. Throw a few bucks towards filmmakers. <coughs> they can go on and do bigger and better projects. And you can tell that Scott Lee has put some effort into this. This was something that he wanted to work on. And while this could have probably been part of a part of an anthology film. <coughs> To be perfectly honest, there are some stretched out portions. As far as the world building, as far as building the two main characters, I thought it did just fine. Could there have been a few more things answered? Sure. Leaving things up for the viewer to decide <laughs> isn't the worst thing in the world, but it has many more positives and negatives than as far as an indie horror offering with a decent world and two pretty good actors. It kind of reminded me of the Astral Woods, where it just focused on a, you know one particular character in that case, but you focused on two, give them <clears throat> enough of a backstory, and also you have some crazy creatures um, you know populate. And I will say that actually for the low budget, they do a pretty good job with the cinematography, the creature effects, and there's some there's some good stuff here. It's, it's more of a throwback, actually, in my opinion, to kind of maybe the 50s and 60s <laughs> sci-fi monster type you know apocalyptic things almost like a stretched out twilight zone episode but pretty good overall walking against the rain certainly gets a recommendation i am going to get into spoilers spoilers will not take very long but yeah check it out you may end up enjoying it i mean why not i mean they're, they, trust me of all the movies that i've seen this year this is in the upper echelon because this had effort and love put into it and two pretty good performances between sophia alani and reese douglas three two one spoilers okay so Blair lost her mother when her mother tried to uh, get her away from these creatures. These creatures that attack for whatever reason. Could it be the apocalypse? Could these be, you know, just the last remnants of humanity before the rapture comes? That's That seems to actually be the most likely one. Could it just be that these creatures just came down and said, okay, we're just going to wipe everybody out, despite the fact these creatures are actually pretty easy to kill, even though they're adapted and they managed to, you know, get out from just attacking at night. Now they can attack during the daytime, almost like the re remnants of this dying world is closing in on both Blair and Tommy. They end up communicating via walkie-talkie. There's a certain, you know, area that Blair's in, nice little area that's around some places where she can look for books, she can find some food. Tommy's struggling because he lost his family and... That would scar anybody. And, yeah, crazies and cre we We hear more growling than anything for a while, and then eventually we do see the creatures. The creature effects certainly aren't all that bad. They kind of <clears throat> sort of remind me of, I don't want to say a descent. I'm trying to think about what they remind me of. They do remind me of a 50s or 60s sci-fi monster movie. <clears throat> and they have to set some ground rules with these walkie-talkies because they're battery-operated. 
check in three times a day, chat for a bit. Though some of these chats do go on a bit to the point where, yes, they're trying to find out more about each other, but man, these, these chats go on a bit where the battery should have run out, but that's something I can overlook. Uh, there is one good line. It's all about, or it's all memories and experiences to shape who we are. That was something that was told to Tommy by his <coughs> family. And there, there actually are some song point. Uh, <laughs> there's at one point where Blair's listening to some headphones, and she's listening to some music. Um, you know, basically, it's you know about the end of the world essentially as we know it, and I feel fine. <coughs> there's one running towards its own extinction. Yeah, we get it. We, we get it. I mean, that's basically what would hum what would the last remnants of humanity try to do? What would they do to survive? And then they run into, well, Blair runs into one particular cultist. Diane Spencer is the cultist's name. Or, oh, I mean, that's the actress's name who plays the cultist. She's beautiful. More, more, and more of her, please. And... <clears throat> Then we get monster time, or the monsters, <coughs> the monsters pick and choose when they attack. A little inconsistent. Uh, one more sleep, and then they're going to get to this particular area where, um, well, Tommy's idea is to basically say goodbye to his dad, take his ashes to the sea, because they love the sea, and, well, he was never able to properly say goodbye to his dad. Um... <coughs> Uh, Blair sleeps in a car that she happens to find. A creature attacks her during the daytime. She forgets how doors work for a second, which was kind of funny. And then manages to crush the creature's head in the door. And they talk about paranormal shows on YouTube. <clears throat> There's a crazy lady that besieges Tommy at a farm, wants the bag, and then she chases him. He gets in the room, sees a creature, manages to get her in the room and let the creature kill her. And then Blair is almost done for when she bops in some train tracks and these creatures apparently hunt by sound. Hmm. Ah, whatever. It's okay. <laughs> and British Crocodile Dundee, thank God you're here. This guy literally is dressed up like, you know, some kind of uh, wilderness man. Attacks, kills a creature, saves her, gives her some food. He lost his wife. He gives her stuff. And she goes off. She has talked to Tommy. He's at this area. Hey, let's meet up here. Cool. We're going to meet up here. And that's implied that this uh, croc British Crocodile Dundee, James, killed himself, which is unfortunate. But he lost his wife, and he has nothing left to live for. He wanted to do something right since he couldn't save his wife. And then Tommy also, um, during his um, last sleep, is besieged by a creature, and there's a fire, and he takes a rock, and he dances it into the fire by crushing the creature's skull. Again, some good practical effects here. And they make it to this particular area. Then more creatures attack. And then they decide to blow the house up. And then they hear something that was referenced earlier by Diane Spencer's. You will hear the seven trumpets, the seven trumpets of hell. And then suddenly this giant creature pops up over those mountains. And that's, well, fuck. Because, yep, the apocalypse is here. Yeah, sure, the movie could have explained a few more things, I suppose, as to how all this happened. And there's there was stuff about a uh, particular evacuation center, you know, and... Like almost like a almost like you know this was caused by humanity being too greedy or whatever it was. There's a few things open to interpretation, but as far as the positives, positives outweigh the negatives, and I'm going to give it a B plus. Good stuff. Let's see what else Scott Leas does as far as feature length films. Also, Sophia Lani, beautiful, and Reese Douglas, very good as well. Good stuff. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.